things are very special there. You know, I see them on the field, winning a uh, first championship with the Buccaneers, uh, New Orleans' very own. What was <laughs> On the seven wall, man, downtown. Yes, sir. Got uh, Larry Fournette. Appreciate you tuning in with us, man. Man, thanks for having me, man. For sure. Cool. So let's get right into it. Talk about the, that journey from like you know where you came from, going into you know winning your first chair. All right. So uh, my journey, you know, uh, I was drafted fourth overall, Jacksonville. You know, uh, came up short my rookie year, whatever the case may be, in the AFC Championship. Uh, my second year, I got hurt. Uh, I tore 5% of my hamstring. You know, it was a bad year. My third year came back strong, finished with 1,700 yards, whatever the case may be. Uh, and after that, I got cut, you know, for some odd reason. You know, I think uh, the first time in my life that I really had to deal with something like that during football. You know, I've always been number one my entire life, coming out of high school, college, you know, whatever the case may be. And I think it was just uh, it was part of my journey, you know. Uh, I think that that humbled me a lot coming from where I come from and being who I am, you know, and, and not being second to no one. And I say uh, this entirely, uh, this season, it was difficult for me, you know, just sitting behind someone, knowing that I can kind of help the team, you know, being the spotlight. You know, I'm, I come from a team where I am the, the, whole, the whole offense is ran through me. Yeah. Now I'm in an offense where they got so many pieces that I'm just, you know, a part of it. Like I'm, I'm, I play like a part of one offense. So, uh, it was it was an interesting journey for me, you know. Uh, I had my I had my doubts, you know, when I was doubting myself. Uh, maybe I'm I, I lost it, you know. I'm not I lost the juice that I used to have, and uh, it all it all was a mind thing. But you know, by me, the grace of God and me favoring, keeping God in the one of my life throughout my whole duration of of my last season, and also my family, my friends being there for me. Uh, I made it through. I persevered persevered through. So without them and God, man, I wouldn't be where I'm at, where I'm at right now to this day. Sure. I remember someone was telling me like going through those the different levels of uh, sport and it's like you're at the top of high school then it's like when you get to college you gotta start all over because not everybody's just as good as you then when you get to the league it's like starting all over again because now you got everybody yeah. you. so you know it just comes like you said with the grind and keep your faith and now you're a champion no one can take that away from you yeah <laughs> Cool. So how does winning a championship in the city affect like the community? You know, because I know a lot of times like when, uh, let's say, a player goes to a certain team, a lot of businesses start picking up, a lot of money flowing in. So what happens to the city once like uh, the, the team wins and you have the like, parade and all that? When you say city, you mean Tampa or New Orleans? Tampa. Tampa. OK. Uh, of course, you know, uh, a lot of businesses start up coming into, you know, one things want you to, uh, you know, actually just support them or offer you deals to be a part of their, their stores, their uh, community and stuff like that. And I think uh, it just motivated a lot of the young, the young people who's from Tampa, you know, seeing guys like myself, who's an African-American, and I come from the same struggle where they come from, you know, been there, done that, and just giving them hope and motivation that whatever you put your mind to it and you stay focused, keep God first, you can do it. You know, I'm just I'm just a living testimony. You know, uh, God gave me a gift, and also this platform that, that we have, and I'm, I'm I'm trying to use it the best way I can to show kids that you don't have to be a ball player, right. be a law, be a doctor, you know, police officer, firefighter. It don't matter. You know, uh, everybody's dream everybody's dream is different. So my whole thing is I wanted to, I want to bring to the community just be that motivation. You know, uh, if any young kid out there who, who loves sports, love, love playing football. Just understanding what it takes and the sacrifice you have to make at a young age to get to where a lot of like guys like myself and you are. You know what I mean? Uh, it's hard, you know what I mean? Especially where I'm from, it's hard to make out of New Orleans. So each and every day, you know, every time I speak, I want to speak wisdom to them, speak positive, speak positive, uh, positivity into those guys. Cause you know, where we come from, you know, so it's like a, you're in a barrel, you're in a barrel with crabs, you know, they're trying to bring you down. So I want to be that stand up guy to lift up, uplift people and take it from out there. Definitely just pay it forward. That's what I try to do too, especially coming from the Bronx and just seeing um, growing up and seeing how things were, especially in that in the where I was growing up and just being able to go in and do things like this that affects different communities. And like you say, you know, being able to pay it forward and you know get out of that crab and barrel mentality. And like I say, you you witnessed it to you from the Bronx. You seen you seen so many great talents yeah. who didn't. I know I know a couple of guys who was better than me in football. 
and didn't make it, you know, either from the streets or whatever. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm trying to prevent. I want the guys who have that talent, who have the ability that I know that could be number one, number whatever in the nation, like me, just like me, or better than me, bring them up, man. Because, you know, where we from, we need that. We need that uplift from our city, from our kids, you know, because they're the future. Absolutely. And that's a good segue into this next question. Talk about the work you've been doing in New Orleans and uh, Tampa for the kids. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's so much, you know. Uh, I think my my duration and the lead, and uh, I did so much, you know. I can say from uh, giving out eight thousand meals a week when they had the little, uh, hurricane thing, the flood, the flood relief uh, program, uh, my free camps I do for kids. You know, I I do the camps because that's what I want to do. Because when I was coming up, no no player never really came back to New Orleans to help help us out, motivate us like that. You know what I mean? So. I'm giving these guys the opportunity to touch multiple football players just like me, play for different teams because I have great relationships with a lot of guys all over the league. And they can come to my camp, talk to them, meet them. You know, some of them, they, they, might, they might look up to them. I don't know, you know. You know, they might tell you at the camp, but overall, you know, the guys that I meet and I ask to come out, uh, they do. You know, and that's the great brotherhood I have with those guys, and I've always appreciated those guys. It's even, it's, and it don't have to be them coming out. It could be five five minutes of the day. I might FaceTime Jalen and Jalen talk to one of the young kids who's upcoming in my city who plays cornerback and they love Jalen, you know. Uh, it's just, man, there's so much I do, you know, uh, and I'm grateful. You know, I'm happy to be in this position that I am to be able to give back and give kids the knowledge, you know. It's, it's, it's so much that we were so far behind and, and I'm trying to help those kids not progress into better young men, you know, uh, it's so much. And uh, I have a long way to go. You know, I'm gonna continue using my platform the best way that I can. And, you know, like I said, once again, just using God's gift, like, just like you, you're using what God's giving you right now, you know, you're reaching out to guys like me to share my story, your story, and someone is, is gonna affect somebody in this world. They're gonna listen to the story of this podcast and they're gonna be like, I wanna be on that one day. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, want, I wanna talk to O. I want to talk to Leonard. You know, I want to. I want to be up there with those guys. For sure. And it's crazy because you think about closing that gap, and if we had like those resources and people coming in as you know youngsters and kids to tell us, all right, this is what's gonna happen when you get older. You do this, this, and now when you get to that age, then you know things are gonna be all right for you. So yeah. what you're doing and being able to you know instill that knowledge and wisdom into the kids, so they're doing the right things growing up. Yeah, and then last question for you, Boys and Girls Club, talk to us about like your relationship with them and the work you've been doing in uh, New Orleans. Oh, so actually I was a member of the Boys and Girls Club <laughs> since a kid. Cool. Um, say it again? Yeah, I was like full circle now. He was a member, now we out here you know, doing work with them and service, so that's amazing. Yes, yeah, me, uh, me and my two sisters, my younger brother, uh, he was still on the daycare at this time. Uh, yes, I went to Boys and Girls Club. Oh uh, man, uh, it's a great after, after school program, you know, uh, help me with my homework, help me with a lot of things, you know, uh, once again, you meet so many people in Boys and Girls Club, different neighborhoods, different, different everything, you know, and it opened up my eyes a lot. And uh, for me to get, get, get the opportunity to give back to the community, why not start where they, they, they gave back to me as a kid. They didn't know I was gonna be a number one player. <laughs> they didn't know nothing. They didn't know nothing about me. And uh, they took that chance on me. They took that chance on me every day, you know, working with me after school. Uh, also, you know, I think that's when my, one of my best days started when playing football, basketball. Uh, I forgot the pool table, it's different though. I think like bumper pool table, you got to hit up the side and make it to the, I can't remember, but I used to play that game 24-7, you know what I mean? But I think uh, by me giving back to them, it means a lot to me because once again, they took a chance on a young African-American like myself. They didn't have to help me every day with my homework. <laughs> you know what I mean? They could have they shoved me to the side and tell me to go play, but they pushed me, you know? Come to, yeah, they pushed me like my mother did. And a lot of great people came from the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, this is day, I know a lot of, I know a lot of kids from there that I grew up with play with there and we still talk uh, here and there. So I build a relationship with those guys too throughout my years there. And now that I'm older, you know, I'm just thinking back how grateful that I am to experience that. Yeah, for sure. And you know, us at Finish Line and JD, we love the work you're doing. 
big partners and fans of Rock Nation. So shout out to Deb as well. Um, so on your behalf, we want to donate 20000 to that same Boys and Girls Club that you grew up in. So I'm sure that 20000 will go a long way for the kids. And, you know, hopefully there's some more uh, players coming out of there, some more doctors, you know, physicians, whatever the case may be. But, you know, it looks like, you know, they're fostering uh, great talent and community. So shout out to you, shout out to them. And yeah, I know that 20,000 go gonna go a long way, so. Yes, I appreciate that, well, thank you. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's about it for me. I'll let you have the closing remarks and close it out with anything else you wanna say. You wanna shout out your kids, some of your campus, things like that. Yeah. Shout out to Rock Nation, shout out to my family, uh, my three beautiful kids, you know, Le Legend Leonard, my mother, my father, you know, shout out to you for giving me this opportunity to be on this on this on this podcast, your show. And uh, I'm thankful, man. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's a wrap. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, see you next week. We have another amazing guest. I'm gonna keep it a secret for now, but <laughs> you know, another rack net rock nation uh family member. So you'll see that next week. And yeah, everybody have a great weekend.